And so we need to go to the side of the guide, the side of the interpretation, imaging, all of this, requesting much more focusing on getting real, proper reservoir, let's say, reasonable reservoir characteristics out of the side lane. It's again diagnostic, right? It's a diagnostic plot. Uh, this very funny one, uh, which is, you know, uh, a sort of uh, annual production, this gas, annual production, and by the end of the year, we put a sort of prediction what we are going to do this year, and by the end of the year, we found already the picture looks otherwise. So this is the start. So this is definitely the initial capacity, and then this is the base decline, how much we are going to lose. So we predicted to lose 75 out of this, but we lost 90. And then the bottle lacking facilities, actually it appeared that the facility guys are doing a good job here. So we expected to gain 45, but we gained 60. The new wells, very bad, right? Because we predicted 100 gain, and we gained only 65. <clears throat> the downtime, and again, you know, the process guys are not doing a good job. So it's, instead of 25, we lost 40. And by the end of the day, and instead of putting something like 460 or 475, we put only 455. And we got penalized because we didn't, you know, uh, realize the contracts. We didn't sell as needed. This gas. Gas is contractual. It's not like oil. Okay? If you don't produce, if you don't sell, you pay penalties. So, and looking at these things, like it's a diagnostic plot. It's, it's, it's predicted versus actual. People have to go back, but we don't do that. Yeah, we have, we have look backs, right? Almost in all of our companies, look back. It's good, good policy. But again, the look back is something for, you know, a report to be put on the shelf. But people have to go back here and see from where did they do the wrong prediction and coming to something like, you know, it's, uh, this is not accepted. 100 to come down to 65, this is not accepted, right? So things like this, we have to think in putting this uh, diagnostic plots. This will help us through the available data to determine what should be our forecast. It should be work here done upon you know, the, 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 the prediction of the rates. Uh, those guys have to understand how much we lose every year. Right? It's not accepted to have such 20% change in decline rate. Uh, and, and of course, those guys also have to find a way to decrease the downtime. Uh, this one thing also that's just for, for you to go and play, this was part of, 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 of a study. Um, so we just go and, and rank the wells and rank their production, whether it's oil or water, and just figure it out. How, this was <coughs> just, just a play. Diagnostic loss, go and throw it. Uh, so we, here we have the low rank. So we ranked the wells from one, say, to 100 by water production, by oil production. We just plotted them, right? So we got a sort of water activity and oil activity. This is very tough mathematical work. Okay. And then after a while, after two or three years, we got that the activities are very uh, close to each other. Here we have oil is dominating and water is less. Here the two lines are becoming one of the same. And once we got already a break, this break is a physical change in the reservoir. And you are getting already water coming to your perforation in respect of whatever you're going to do. <coughs> So are you prepared for that, for the diagnostic plot? Are you prepared to produce much water? Are you, are you prepared to treat water? So all of the things are diagnostic plots. Decision trees. This is one part that I sometimes I feel bad. We, as engineers or, or geologists, we do not <coughs> utilize this tool, which is definitely free of charge. And even there are you know, lots of softwares now, and we don't use that. A tree. So very easy. This is the way you, you, you build it. So time moves right. So you start with a project. You put the net present value, what you are going to lose if you abandon it, what you are going to pay if you are going to for a horizontal well. So these all are, are, we can say, sort of money. Then if you put a horizontal well, you may go and, and, and put asset track there, or just expect it to become already as high fuel. So ask, come on, how are we going to put all of this? have an area already. This area has already a history of horizontal drilling. This area has a history of passive frack. Go and look at the data you have. And from there, you can definitely put this value of 40%, 6%, and 10 wells. We got already 10 for acid frack. 40%. Easy, right? 
and so on. The next is to go the way around and calculate how much you are going to gain and definitely not abandoning this asset but adding a horizontal load. And by the end of the day, you got something like 300, you know, 1,300 million Hindi. The US doesn't, doesn't mean anything. But just to show you that it's very easy uh, exercise to be done through uh, <coughs> decision trees. Again, utilizing the old data. Uh, this work was done in order to uh, help the company to make a decision who is to, uh, uh, to hire as a vendor for asset stimulation. And I know that we have a lot of, of, uh, of, of service companies here, so uh, I'm not going to name uh, who was the owner or the winner, but just we put like first contractor, second contractor, third contractor. I think you can guess, right? <laughs> so what we did is we went through the history of this asset, collected how many stimulation jobs we have, and then we divided that according to who did it, who was the implementer. So for example, you can say that the first contractor got something like 30% of them, 45% of them, 24% of them. Good. Then the second is, yes, what was the cost? So we put a sort of an average cost for this, and then take out of this 30% jobs, how many jobs were performed below the average? How many jobs were performed above the average? So 40% of the 30% was cheap. Okay? This is data. This is data. <clears throat> then, okay, definitely there are cheap jobs and expensive jobs. Then by the end of the day, did we have a successful job or a failure? So out of the cheaper ones, we also got a sort of 60% of this 40% of this 30% is a success. Okay? By the way, it's very easy. Very easy. 